Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back. Today we are going to be making a C60 C60 hetero structure where one of the C60s is rotated with respect to the other. Um, we're pretty much going to be doing everything in VESA. We are going to generate the structure, the initial C60, with IQMOL. Um, but actually, in one of my other videos, I think it's the one where I do a C60 graphene hetero structure from last year. Uh, I basically took the crystalline crystalline C60 unit cell and cut C60 from there. So that's, that's one way you can get C60. Another way is if you have IQMOL already downloaded, and you can just go to Google, type in download IQMOL, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It takes me like five minutes to do it. It's pretty easy. Um, if you already have IQMOL, you can just go to build, oh, sorry, not build, uh, insert fragment molecules and go to, uh, where is it, fullerenes and basically get C60. And then when you get it, just touch the screen. Don't move it at all, because it's very easy to rotate. Uh, you can zoom in and out though. And then just save it as, um, here I save it as C60 original. Um, but you can generate C60 in many ways. So basically the first step of this uh, demonstration is just to get C60. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it in Vesta here. Okay, so, so so now what do we have to do? We have to make a C60 dimer and rotate one C60 with respect to the other. And how we're gonna do it is if you can see, this C60 here has this pentagon uh, on its Z axis. And on the other side is the other pentagon, right? But you can see that the pentagons are not, ev are not aligned. So if I were to import another C60, go into edit, edit data, phase, import the C60 original, and move it up eight. You can see that this face here, right, is between the two C60, that these are not directly on top of each other. And I wanna make it like pentagon on pentagon formation, so to speak. So that means I have to rotate this top C60 by, uh, 36 degrees, right? Because there's five sides to the Pentagon, 365 by five is 72. I need to do half of 72, which is 36. Um, so I need to basically rotate this top C60. The problem is in VESA, that's not easy. Um, the reason why that's not easy is because, I'm just gonna exit out of here. The reason why that's not easy in VESA um, is not because rotations are hard in VESA, it's because the center of mass moves when you do a rotation. So let me show you uh, what I mean. So let's say this is my axis here in Vesta, okay? So this is my X axis and this is my Y axis. And the Z axis, oh, the, this will be my X axis. The Z axis is what we are looking down on, okay? So let me just reopen this again. So we're looking down this C axis here and so that's at this axis we're basically looking down, okay? So I'll just draw this here. We're, we're looking down this Z axis. Just to reiterate, this is an X. <laughs> I know I messed that up. Okay, anyways, uh, so let's say uh, this is our, our C60 molecule is, I don't know, here, okay? So this thing I'm drawing here, this black part, these axes, that's this axis here. And then here we have our C60 molecule. But the thing is, we don't want to, when, when you do rotation in Vesta, it's going to rotate this axis here. It's not going to rotate where we want to rotate, which is the center of the C60. So what happens is that when we rotate this by 36 degrees, like let's say we move this plane here by 36 degrees, it actually will move the entirety of the C60. So every atom on the C60 will move. 36 degrees, okay? And what we want is we just wanted to keep the center of the C60 fixed and rotate the C60 sort of on a spindle. You know what I mean? We want basically to only do the rotation of the Z axis within C60. But it, when we do it in Vesta, we're gonna rotate this Z axis. So this XY plane will move and then the C60 itself will move as well. So we need to basically shift the C60 center of mass back. So you can see here, just to reiterate, we're gonna rotate around the Z axis. But when you do the rotation in Vesta, 
you rotate around this z-axis, not the z-axis in the center of C60. So because you are rotating around this z-axis, uh, the entire C60 molecule will move and you'll move the center of mass. So you, then, you need to then subtract the center of mass that was moved. Okay, so let's exit out of here. So to keep track of the center of mass, here's what we do. We're gonna enter, we're gonna insert in an atom in the center of C60. And you know, my favorite atom to insert into things is strontium. So how do I in insert a strontium atom into here? Well, let's go ahead and just figure out where the center of this thing even is. So let's go back, make sure, let's press C to make sure we're on this Z axis. And I'm gonna click this atom and this atom. And these are basically going to be um, the same in Y, right? They're the same Y. And in X, you can see it's actually going to be half of this, the sum of these. So let's bring out my calculator. So this plus this one, okay, divided by two, that is the position of the center. So now I go to edit, edit data structure parameters. Then I go to new. Let's make the symbol strontium, the label strontium one. And so for X, it's going to be this. Um, for Y, I actually have to put it in the middle here. So let's go to this atom and this atom. And you can see now the X's are the same, but the Y's are different. So now I have to do the same procedure for Y. This plus this divided by two is this. And now for Z, um, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and apply this and see where it is. Okay, so it's in the center. It happens to actually be exactly in the center. So we didn't have to do it for, for the uh, Z axis, most likely because um, the Z axis for some reason is already taken to be zero as the center of here. So that's actually pretty convenient. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and press apply. Select okay. Um, yeah, so that's actually pretty weird. Um, I guess maybe it will rotate around this in a weird way, but um, this is this this will help us keep track. So maybe this drawing I didn't paint wasn't exactly accurate, but it's similar in the sense that the this center, this strontium atom will move and we don't want it to move, right? We want to rotate around the strontium atom, not have the strontium atom move when we rotate. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. So file uh, export data. We're gonna export this whole thing as an XYZ. So it's going to become um, C60, we'll call it strontium. And make sure you copy this label, save, no. So then when we come over here, right, here's something I want to do. I want to go into the C60 strontium, and I want to replace this XYZ file with C60 strontium. It's very important. Then coming here into C60 original, and we'll do C60 original, okay? And these labels are important because when you open up the Vesta, so you will say this C60 original, then you go to... Um, Oh, actually, I'm sorry. So we have to open up C60 strontium. And then we go to edit, edit data phase. That label we put in the XYZ file comes up here in the title and in the phase up here and up here. Well, I guess this is the name of the file, but yeah, this is basically the label we just put into the file, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we want to rotate the C60 molecule. And we wanna rotate it 30, uh, uh, six degrees like we said. So basically what's gonna happen is we are gonna rotate um, this one zero zero vector um, using a rotation matrix. And basically how we do that is you can just go to Wikipedia, type in rotation matrix, it will tell you basically, um, oh, I guess I'll open up paint again. Um, it's basically going to be, you'll have your original vector, your one zero zero vector, and then you'll have a rotation matrix. And um, basically you can just realize that this will be uh, cosine of, uh, what is it, the angle you wanna rotate. This will be minus sine of uh, alpha. This will be zero. And um, Basically, what's, what's going to happen is 
we're going to basically just multiply this and this. Um, maybe this should actually be a row. In that case, we'll be doing uh, this times this thing. So here you'll actually have sine of alpha. This will be cosine because we're rotating around z. So this will be 1. And this will be of uh, alpha. And so if we do, so just ignore this, if we do uh, this times this, we're basically going to get um, uh, oh wait, <laughs> I forget my matrix multiplication. Uh, should be oh wait, it's just it's just it's just, it's just this one, sorry. It's this one multiplied by this. Um, so we'll we'll get cosine of alpha plus sine of uh, alpha. Maybe it's minus, I don't know. Anyways, it, it actually doesn't matter. Uh, it just would change the direction. So anyways, we basically just have to pick our angle and this one zero zero becomes cosine alpha sine alpha. Yeah, sorry. I, uh, I've always struggled with, uh, with math and I basically just, <laughs> I just tried a bunch of times till it works. Um, yeah, maybe I'm like, I don't know, I, I guess other people don't struggle with it, but I always kind of do, especially when I'm making the videos and it's like live time. Anyways, so, um, yeah, that's basically it. So just pull out our calculator here. Um, let's make a fresh one. So we had, what was it? 36 times cosine. Okay. Let's answer that. And then 36 times sine answer that. Oh, by the way, if you're like new at Vesta, or I mean, you can't be really new at Vesta, but uh, at like uh, physics or chemistry as a whole, uh, my biggest advice to you is just take your time, uh, practice every day. Um, you know, like they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, t it takes years uh, to build these skills. And so uh, it's like muscle memory. The more you do it, the more you're going to know it. And so just, you know, do a little bit each day and be patient with yourself. Okay. So here's the cosine, here's the sine. And so we all we have to do is basically just do cosine and sine. Now I could do minus sine or sine here because it basically doesn't matter which way I rotate it. I can rotate it left or rotate it right. It doesn't really matter. Um, so let's go ahead and press apply. Okay, and so it did the rotation. And now what I have to do, so you can see it basically rotated it here, 36 degrees. So let's go ahead and select okay. Now what I have to do is save this as an XYZ. So I'm going to export data and I'm gonna call it C60 strontium uh, rotate shift because it rotated and the center of mass shifted. And this is very important. So go ahead and save this label and press save. Come back here to C60 strontium rotate shift. Post in the new label, okay. Then come back here. And what we're gonna do is get rid of this. And we are going to open up C60 strontium. So this is before the rotate shift. And then what we're gonna go to do is edit, edit data phase. And we're gonna go to import the rotate shift. And this is where these labels are super important. Press apply. And you can see here, here you can see the center of mass shifted. So what we have to do is shift it back. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna click on the first strontium atom and here's the coordinates, and then on the second one, here. And this is why we put the strontium in there, so we can see the difference in the center of the of the C60. So we're gonna do this top minus the bottom. So here, and then we're going to do uh, this one as well. So you can see the Z axis didn't shift. Press apply. Okay, looks like they shifted more, so we have to go back in a direction somehow. Okay, so, oh, maybe I, I, I did something wrong here. Anyways, so we, we basically somehow shifted it back correctly. And um, now what happens is I'm gonna take this C60 rotate and I'm gonna put it up eight, uh, nine angstroms, select apply. Okay, now select A. 
now you can see that the pentagons are even, right? Remember before, in the very beginning, they were not. So select OK. And let's go ahead and delete these strontium atoms. OK, then what we're going to do is file export this data as a C60, um, we'll call it hetero. So this is the XYZ, press save, no. And then what we're going to do is we're going to export this also as a VASP. So C60 hetero uh, dot VASP. Oh, I have to save as a VASP type. Save it, Cartesian. OK, control W out of here. Now come back here. We're not done yet. Let's rename this C60 hetero rotated. And then the VASP, we're going to call it C60 hetero rotated VASP. OK, let's delete this strontium atom. Put carbon has 60. Delete this first atom. OK, now come to our hetero XYZ. Should be 120 atoms because it's 2C60. Copy all of these coordinates. Paste them into the VASP. Delete the atomic label for carbon. And we have actually not 60, but 120 carbon. OK, oops. Save. And now let's go back to, let's open up the XYZ again. Okay, now go to the bond length and we're gonna get the Z dimension is 15.65 angstroms. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give our crystal 30 angstroms of vacuum. And in the X and Y, let's go ahead and measure the Y like, like this. It's like about seven. So I'm gonna give it um, uh, five angstroms on each side. So let's make it 12, and since it will be the same in the other direction, let's make this 12 as well. Save, and exit it out of here, and let's open up our hetero structure. Oops, I opened up the wrong one. Okay. So here it is. Uh, it may look funny, but this is actually the correct structure. So what we do is we then go to boundary, and we do two by two in the X and Y direction. Actually, we could do, no, it's two by two. Select apply. Okay, we'll go to space filling. Actually, no, we'll stick, save ball and stick. Uh, this doesn't matter, that's just visuals. Um, actually, I'm gonna go to, I'm pressing control Z. I'm gonna expand it two in the Z. Also go minus one in this Z, so you can see. So yeah, here's basically our structure. Um, if we select A, we can delete all the unnecessary stuff here. That was just for visual. Rotate here. Yeah, so this is, you know, basically it. Um, this is the C60 structure. So what you would do if you wanted to put this into quantum espresso is you would basically add all the carbons back to here, or you can get them from here. These would be your, these would be what goes in your atomic position. That's like all of these. So if I were to put the carbon back in all these, the part in quantum espresso, that's like put your atomic positions in, that would be all of these. And this, these would be your unit cell vectors. Um, but you would need to add, if you want to go to quantum espresso, you need to add the car, the atomic labels back. Um, yeah, and this is, this is what it is. So this is the C60 dimer. Um, there are a couple angstroms apart. You could vary that in the XYZ file. And they're such that the um, uh, the pentagons are exactly aligned. Remember in the very beginning, the pentagons were not aligned. So um, yeah, so this is a C60 dimer heterostructure that is periodic in A and B. Uh, C technically has a vacuum. A and B technically have a vacuum as well. This is not a uh, you know, purely crystalline model. Uh, but it is much less than it is in the C direction. Um, yeah, so um, if you have any questions, comments, uh, please leave them down below. Um, thanks for watching, as always, and if you have not subscribed, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.